This is the shadiest doctor in bodybuilding, Dr. Tony Huge, curing cancer with SARMs. For those of you who are unfamiliar with who Dr. Tony Huge is, we have covered him in the past. He has a harem of ladyboys and women in Thailand who he allegedly experiments on with biochemicals. He's been on my radar for quite some time now. It's one of those rabbit holes that I don't like going down because it's dark and I've said this in the past and I'll say it again. There will be Netflix documentaries of the sorts about this man and what he does. Is he criminal? I don't know. There's definitely some moral grayness going on. Check it out. This is by Coach Colton. We've reacted to one of his videos before about Dr. Tony Huge and specifically Connor Murphy involving the case of Leo Longevity. The title of that video is This Needs to Be Investigated. Friends of Freedom, I am Dr. Tony Huge, and we are here to crush ignorance and pioneer human evolution. All good. So if you didn't know, I've been putting on my Sherlock Holmes hat and have been doing a ton of research on people within the fitness industry and very exclusively, I've talked a lot about Tony Huge, Connor Murphy, and the whole gang there. There was allegedly a murder case, allegedly a cover-up, but I think we all know that when someone usually makes a bad decision, it's not just one bad decision. I think very rarely in life that is the case, of course, everyone deserves second chances, but usually you'll find that if the severity of that bad decision is quite large, they're likely to make further bad decisions. It's usually not a one and done kind of thing. Now, just to be clear, I'm not gonna call anyone a serial killer, specifically not Tony Huge, but there is many more dark secrets to uncover with the whole scenario. Is there an extra extradition treaty to the US with Thailand? I need to know. There is. Okay. The last video we talked about with Dr. Tony Huge, there was a criminal investigation regarding the death of another YouTuber, Leo Longevity, that was staying in his house in Thailand, along with Connor Murphy. There were weird, vague, I'm not gonna call them threats, but the energy was off in chat. People claiming to have known information that they won't tell me, and other people. I just don't like any of it, if I'm being honest. I don't like that this is able to occur. <laughs> Maybe... That makes me soy, maybe that makes me beta. My brain can't comprehend how this can happen <laughs> with zero repercussions. A man died and then everyone was like, Yep, nothing to see here. Nobody is telling the truth. Their stories are all mixed up. So without any further ado, let's address the elephant in the room. Tony Huge calls himself a doctor. Yeah, chat was saying that an expat who owns several bars out there was like the killer or at least put the hit out on, on I'm like, huh? <laughs> huh? Do we have proof of any of this? Why, why is nothing happening? Even though he's actually a lawyer. You're a doctor, right? And I did a quick Google. So you were, you're not a medical doctor. You're right. a law doctor. Doctor of law. Yeah. Which doctor I mean, I, law. I don't need to call myself doctor, but the problem is, you know, I'm in the area. I'm also interested in not how much money this man makes. Don't really care about the numbers, but I want to know the scale of the operation in which he sells supplements, SARMs, and or steroids to people all around the world. Because he manufactures them, from what I believe, and he sells a bunch of bottles and elixirs and potions to people throughout all of his social media platforms. Area of chemical biohacking and people come to me when their doctor can't solve their problem. So I'm like a doctor doctor. There's a little bit of a misleading sense to that. While being a lawyer and having a degree in law can technically or maybe apply as a doctorate, I don't think it is one of the things that applies here. Within the field of law, pretty much universally, no one accepts that title as legitimate. Yeah, he literally has zero medical experience whatsoever. <laughs> Reason being is that obviously that title is generally applied to PhD holders or actual practitioners within the medical field. And so you said you got a doctorate of laws? Do you mean a JD? Life is like a game and Tony is winning. Gotta pursue hedonism and competition at all times like a real man, top of the totem pole. <laughs> 
I know that's a joke. Yeah. So what makes you think a JD is a, is a doctorate of laws? It's a doctor degree. It, it's a juris doctorate, but it's not it's not a doctor degree. Like it doesn't you don't you don't really think it makes you allows you to call yourself a doctor, do you? Yes. So you think I can call myself a doctor? He can call himself a doctor. We're all doctors. So according to you, every lawyer is can say DR in front of their name. Just like every chiropractor, every dentist, okay, every medical um, doctor, every doctor. At so a why don't they? Degree. Um, <laughs> I don't know. No some, idea. Some, you, some you're do. the only person to figure this out. Some chiropractors demand me. I'm not really talking about doctor. chiropractors. I'm ta yeah, I'm talking about lawyers. Do you know of any other lawyer who calls himself a doctor? I don't remember. I haven't been in the lawyer. That's sketchy as fuck. <laughs> He's George Santos maxing. I'm not Jewish. I'm Jew-ish. Remember that one? For circle for a while. Did you ever refer to yourself as a doctor when you were a lawyer? No, my friends did. Which friends? I don't remember. So in 2007, you had friends that referred to you as doctor? Right. Doctor what? Just doctor. Um, Who is he talking to? <laughs> what is this interview from? He's getting grilled right now. Just because? Like a nickname or was it? did it have anything to do with your practice of law? It had to do with getting my doctor of jurisprudence. Oh, so they would say, hey, doctor, you're a doctor now, pat on the back, that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah. And you didn't stop them? No. Because you believed in your heart of hearts that lawyers are allowed to call themselves doctors. Now, this is a rhetorical question, I hope, but do you think he's actually this stupid and thinks that he has the, not only the audacity, but privilege of calling himself a doctor? Or is this literally just to scam people? Is that what you're saying? It's just friends calling each other's names. Uh, but you adopted it, is what I'm saying. Yes. So you didn't stop that. Right. Right. Is there, so is there any type of research you did to determine whether or not lawyers can call themselves doctors? In, in what forum I mean, the idea that you could just call yourself anything you want and just if you just believe it yourself like that is the truth no dude i'm i'm president Philion. i'm literally president Philion. what do you mean you're the one making it weird you can call yourself whatever you want not really i can't i can't put up a shingle saying i'm a doctor and give people medicine is that what you of course not no and doctor's I never a very special thing right doctor's allowed to prescribe medicine you can't just go around calling yourself a doctor right it's a pretty self-inflicted problem Problem, Tony. To me, you just falsely admitted that you're using a professional title to advertise yourself as something you're not. I mean, you're sure acting like a doctor by- Is that legal? <laughs> Can you do that? He bought established titles for doctor doctors, yeah. By claiming that certain SARMs cure diseases and all, but I think everyone knows you're not in the medical practice. And a lot of these compounds are actually cures for diseases. You're gonna run into some problems saying that. If you're faking being a doctor, while also biohacking, as he calls it, there's a weird line that's getting crossed. It's stolen valor. I mean, I use SARMs to cure people for diseases, not just bodybuilding purposes, and, and for longevity. And the only reason that this guy's able to get away with what he does is because he's a lawyer. He operates in the gray area. Unfortunately, despite being a very close colleague with Leo and Longevity, who actually has... It seems like teriology to me. That's a great way to put it. He's terry-pilled. ...has a really good reputation or I should say had, of biohacking. There was legitimate accurate- Are there any doctors in chat? <laughs> I want to know. I want to know, one, ha why. Why you would be in chat and not seeing patients. <laughs> and two, why is he able to do this? Get the fuck out. Doctor here. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm gonna need- I'm gonna need some sort of, uh, some proof. Um, do you have a source? Not contracted currently. Okay, so Jimmy in chat is a fucking doctor. So be it. There it is. Some of you identify as doctors. <laughs> All right. That's true. Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil. Are they doctors? Is Dr. Phil a doctor? I don't think so. Is Dr. Oz a doctor? I was under the impression that Dr. Oz had some sort of alternative medicine backing. I don't, I don't know if it's legit. Okay. You guys are saying no, but to who? Dr. Oz is a heart surgeon. Okay. That, that guy can probably have the title doctor. Dr. Phil? Dr. Phil is not a doctor. So, Tony Huge has a point, bro. He's got a fucking point. Another one. Dr. Mike Isratel. He has his PhD in exercise science, but he's not a medical doctor. I, I, haven't been in, I haven't been to fucking college in a long time. Or university. Do you call professors doctor if they have their PhD? Do you glaze them that hard? Dr. Phil is a therapist. It's your doctorate. <laughs>
<laughs> so, this, did we just go in circles, or did we just find out that Dr. Tony Huge actually can call himself a doctor because he has his JD? Is it JD? So, <laughs> is Dr. Tony Huge based? PhD grants you the title of doctor because you have a doctorate. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's able to call himself doctor then. You don't think JD gives you the title doctor? Doctorate is, do is a doctorate, bro. That's true. Great claims and research being done about the things he was saying. However, I can't simply say the same about Tony Huge. There's so much recycled information that he uses as well as misinformation at large. For example, he goes around saying things like this. It's like the SARMs are so much better than the classic steroids. And yet people stick to the classic steroids because that, that's what they're familiar with. They're scared of the new technology. The newer technology of steroids is better and safer and more advanced, has more benefits and less side effects. They just can't connect that in their mind. And Instead, everybody's afraid of new chemistry. And look, I get it. There's obviously going to be advancements within medications and the medical system at large, but I don't think SARMs, selective androgen receptor modulators, is something we're going to be seeing anytime soon come to fruition. And I do have a video covering some of the things that are exactly wrong with SARMs, which you can watch here. But to sum things up, from all the clinical trials we have, not a single SARM has been approved for medical use as we currently speak because of the fact that they've caused heart attacks, strokes, and produced a handful of other side effects that you'd never have to worry about if you've just pinned traditional gear. So, so Dr. Tony Huge <laughs> uses his JD to call himself doctor and then runs a SARM factory in Thailand. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, the medical industry is a little bit afraid of this quote-unquote new chemistry because, quite frankly, it's dangerous and it doesn't show to have any significant benefit beyond the things that are already in use, like testosterone, Anovar, or Primable. I get it. I mean, I don't agree with it, but I get it. Obviously, the reason that he's talking up these products so much is because... But using doctor to mislead people in a medical sense... That has to be a no-go from a law perspective. But I don't think he has anything to worry about being in fucking Thailand. That's a problem. You could just content max like a pat, like a passport bro across the world and no one cares. As he's peddling these products and trying to sell them and... Yeah. Not only is calling him Dr. Wild, but do calling him Dr. Tony Huge. <laughs> like, why are we glazing this man? Is it because he's huge? I don't know. I think I'm bigger than him. I think I'm actually bigger than Dr. Tony Huge. You're right, calling yourself doctor in a medical context when you don't have an MD is a big legal no-no. Sounds like an adult film actor. <laughs> it sounds like a Johnny Sins character, bro. Just call him Tony. But then that's reductive. Because any anyone can be a Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tone. Hey, fucking Tone. You know what I'm saying? We have to refer to him as Dr. Tony Huge. I identify as being bigger than him. <laughs> Hey, Tony, where's the fucking gabagoo? Start a business, which arguably is terribly immoral, as we've talked about with many other people on this channel. But what's shocking to me is unlike any other company within this field who labels their products as research chemicals only, he's very directly marketing these for human use. And his company name has the word athlete in it, implying that it's supposed to be used for athlete. Maybe I'm stupid or I forgot, but he owns Enhanced Athlete. You know what pisses me off? Tony Huge might have more fucking bags than I I do. That bothers me on like a spiritual level. He's literally grinding harder than I can. It's, but beyond that, he's calling these things supplements, dietary supplements, which is certainly one thing you should avoid doing from a legal aspect when you're selling peptides and SARMs. Now, if he's a lawyer, I have a hard time believing he would just do shit that he knows would be illegal. SARMs aren't technically legal in the way that non-medical drugs like say cocaine are illegal, but it is illegal for companies to market them as dietary supplements and they can't be prescribed by doctors. Well, <laughs> he's not actually a doctor, but he refers to himself as one, and he's not prescribing them to anyone. He's just selling them. SARMs are also banned by the U.S. Department of Defense. Huh? <laughs> the DOD? And from Tony himself, he said, It is legal to possess. It is legal to in for other people to inject themselves, but it is illegal to actually- Nah, nah, man, nah, man. He's law maxing. What the fuck? He knows the loopholes. How are we supposed to beat this man? He's like Better Call Saul on Trent. Literally. Sell it to someone like you would a supplement. Obviously, Tony has gone to some lengths to avoid any kind of liability here by the packaging confirming that the company assumes no responsibility if- yeah. I'm tired of seeing this shit, bro. All these influencers and scammers and gurus, they just add one little blurb 
of small text and it's like, we can't be sued. Sorry. You signed your life away when you bought our product. Oh, you didn't read the ingredients that are listed in Chinese on the back. Sorry. This product is misused. But what I don't understand is specifically what is the correct use of the product then? These Yeah. <laughs> Instead of better call Saul, it's better get swole. Products are inherently dangerous and there's nothing from stopping teenagers to take them. And you could very clearly ask, why is that a problem, Colton? Well, some of these products are going to be sort of hormonal. Does Greg Doucette sell SARMs? Turkesterone. Everyone talks about Turkesterone, bro. Turk Builder. First of all, you gotta be out of your mind to use something called Turkesterone. That sounds off. Why is turkey and testosterone fusing? Imagine attributing your gains to Turkesterone. Huh? Could never be me. Yeah, turkey sarmwiches, bro. Get the fuck out of here. You become Turkish? Now, if they came out with something called Americosterone, now we're talking. Manipulators, they don't just selectively activate the androgen receptor, which is what a SARM is, a selective androgen. All I need to know though is like, it's is it a SARM? Is it a supplement? What the fuck? What's the difference? You know, SARMs are not supplements, but, 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 but supplements are SARMs. Not all supplements are SARMs, but SARMs can be supplements. Like, what are we doing here? We're splitting hairs. What the fuck is Turk Builder? Turkesterone plus Greg's cookbook makes you Hulk. It's like ashwagandha basically needs more testing. It does nothing. Cool! I wish I could sell nothing in a bottle. Receptor modulator, they do systemically activate basically androgen receptors everywhere compared to the selectiveness that they're marketed for. And so as a result, humans who do take things like RAD140 or many other SARMs will experience some downregulation within their HPTA access or hypothalamic pituitary ovarian or testicular access. That means young children who will take these products will shut down their natural hormone production Hell yeah, bro. Leading to a plethora of issues later on in life. Not even at puberty yet. And at some point, I really hope that Tony does catch some backlash from selling these products openly for human use. Here's the thing. When you're a degenerate and you don't care, no one else seems to care. Let me say that again. If you are a degenerate and you don't care yourself, then no one else seems to care. It's when there's a disconnect between who you are as a person, or at least how you present yourself and your actions where people are like, something's off here. But with Tony Huge, you know what you're getting. Like obviously a jacked fake doctor in Thailand is going to sell shady supplements. That, that makes sense in my brain. But clearly, it shows that Tony doesn't care one bit. We did a video on a kid named Cody Copa a while back, and Tony is now... This kid's 14, by the way. This kid is 14, by the way. ...sponsoring him, which, keep in mind, this is a 14-year-old kid. I believe he's 15-year-old now, but... Where are your parents? He is on trend. He is on testosterone and a bunch of steroids. So as much as he claims that his products are good for health and longevity, I don't actually believe that's the case when you're sponsoring a 14-year-old who is taking a copious amount of steroids. You are quite literally embracing steroid abuse among teenagers. And if you're familiar with Tony at all, you at least... People in the fitness industry are like oh based yo get those gains <laughs> clearly because nobody's doing anything know that he's somewhat consistent with his views there's two common things that he often says a day natural is a day wasted and the other thing is for every biological problem there is a chemical solution now obviously he has a strong view on this stuff and i would like to believe for every biological problem there is a chemical solution <laughs> wow um, I'm not a chemist, nor a biologist, but I don't think that checks out. It's because of the sake he has, well, multiple companies within the industry, but there's a lot of issues with this particular view. I mean, for one, I do use gear myself, but do I think that every human on planet Earth needs to be on some sort of pharmacology to live their best existence? Absolutely fucking not. I think that's perplexing and absolutely stupid. You are made of stupid. Stupid. But secondly, do I believe- Stay natty bros. Stay natty bros. There's no point. Steroids make you gay. You literally get female breasts. Perky, tight nips. You want that as a man? It accelerates your nor- your norwood. The norwood reaper will come for you. And you have to inject yourself. Think about that. Sp from a- from a- spiritual perspective. Somebody- uh, something, a foreign object, is cooming gooning inside of you. Pretty cringe to me. Pretty cringe to me. Are you gonna pop pills to feel good? No shot.
no shot. Believe that there is a chemical solution to every biological problem? Also, absolutely not. In, in fact, most problems we can find organic sort of solutions. Unless you have a contract for 12 figures in a professional sport, none of you should be on gear. <laughs> That's, I mean, imagine not utilizing the gear usage to be the top level at a sport and set yourself up for ludicrous amounts of money. Imagine actually ruining your life slowly, accelerating the aging process, and then relying on chemicals and drugs to feel baseline forever for nothing. For 30, for, for 30 extra pounds on your bench towards that don't require taking synthetic chemicals i mean a, a solution is in this case a problem created by you that you now want to solve because you created the problem yeah no no, no. I, I know bodybuilding is not a sport but i'm saying you should only the only i guess utilitarian use of gear for me is if you're like a spec ops super soldier and everyone on seal team nine is on it because you have a mission to fucking uh, neutralize operatives. I don't fucking know. What I'm saying is like, if you're a regular person and you go to the gym, there's no reason to be on gear. Even if you bodybuild, there's, there's, uh, what are you gonna get a plastic trophy? You're not sebum. But if you're a professional athlete, I could see that logically making sense. It's like, holy fuck, if I don't perform, I don't get $60 million a year for 10 years. That's the only, like, devil's contract I see this making sense. Them by yourself. Brad, show them how it's done. Boom. Sell me that pen. Watch. Go on. Let me show this fucking pen. That's my boy right there. This pen. Yeah. Answering phones at T-Mobile and benching 405 is not a good look. <laughs> uh, fucking right. sell anything. Why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you name down that napkin for me? I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand, my friend. You know what I'm saying? Shit. He's creating urgency. Oh, yeah. Getting to want to buy the stuff. Yes. It's something that they need. You know, you know what I mean? And that's the thing. All nuns are lesbians. What the fuck are you talking? Now, I don't lie when I say that the healthcare industry sucks ass. It's terrible in virtually most countries you go to, unless you're in Thailand, especially as a bodybuilder. But one thing they tend to get right is often assess all of the possible paths they can take before prescribing medications. Now, you might argue that America's had a lot of scandals in the past with things like Adderall and methamphetamines, and that's definitely true. This decongestant contains methamphetamine, and this drug test will prove it. So I decided to try testing the inhaler itself. And not only did that come back positive for methamphetamine, it also came back positive for another drug, MDMA. In 2002, a British skier tested positive for amphetamines at the Olympic Games, and he was stripped of his medal. Turns out he had just used one of these inhalers, and this is what turned his test positive. Well, people also abuse rescue inhalers because of albuterol, which is a corticosteroid, which enhances your intake of oxygen into your lungs and shit. NFL players... Recently, the the there was talk of I think it was um who's the crazy one the uh, fucking quarterback that goes on podcast now and is like mad political anyway NFL players abusing opioids and painkillers so they could just run into each other Aaron Rodgers yeah Aaron Rodgers was just on a podcast talking talk I'm pretty sure self admitted admittedly talking about taking painkillers in his career <laughs> like these athletes at the top level are going to take literally anything and everything. There's a meta. Bro, I, I know anecdotal stories of college athletes being told by their coaches, come back next year on roids, like in, in, the, in the fucking off season. Like you need to hop on roids. <laughs> The Olympic Committee's rules uh, at the time did not distinguish between the very illegal dextromethamphetamine and the very legal levomethamphetamine, and so they did not give him his medal back. But I think most doctors, if good and progressive, are going to say, hey, let's look at our options here before placing you on a swath of different chemicals. And if you think about it, the vast majority of people are actually unhealthy. Have you seen the athletes in the UFC right now? Bro, who's that one woman? Jacked woman fighter in UFC. She's like 17 and 0 right now. She's blonde. Kayla Harrison. Bro. Bro, have you seen this chick? <laughs> have you seen this chick, chat? Sorry, gang. That's gotta be one of the most jacked women I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> my life. I mean, how is that allowed? How is that allowed, bro? Pull it up. <laughs> you wanna see how jacked this woman is, bro? Okay, hold on. <laughs> bro. 
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What is going on here? What is going on here, bro? B, diet, exercise, who knows what. They could fix basically a lot, if not all of their problems without the need for any kind of medications. I mean, just think about glucon-like one peptides. They don't even need to exist, but because people can't stop eating, they exist. So like I said, you're creating your own. Are those the GLP ones? Ozempic, is that what you're talking about? GLP ones? You need to put down the fork. The fats need to stop eating. There, I solved obesity. Chat, I solved it. Stop eating! Is Ozempic gear for people who just hate exercising? Yes. ...on problems and then making the solution chemistry. But it could just be a solution that you can generate naturally. Okay, if you use the- Stop eating junk food? All right, let's get into this. You could literally eat junk food and still lose weight. Bro, I had nachos for lunch yesterday. Granted, pretty damn good high quality ingredients. An ice cream cone the size of this fucking water bottle. Two slices of pizza and buffalo wings. That, that was what I ate yesterday as well as breakfast. Waffles, sausage, fruit, orange juice. A lot of it is a, well, it is a metabolic problem, but it's because fat people don't move at all. It's, it's an energy equation. Either stop eating or move more. Hopefully you do both. The occasional peptide to fix an injury, that's a little bit of a different thing, or something to enhance cognition before a big test or a long work day, which is something I regularly do, fair enough. But if you're entirely dependent on injecting something and believe that if you don't take that something, or any kind of chemistry, that you are simply lesser than, that is radicalized belief. You are no better than a pothead on the side of the street, or more accurately, a meth head, who can't find a home because he just simply can't stop. This is an interesting, I guess, I don't, I don't think it's moral, I guess it's an ethical conundrum. Are steroid users any different than, say, potheads, tweakers? Is there a stratification of drugs? Because I asked a question to somebody in my life. I was like, what would you think of somebody who recreationally uses gear? Would you liken them to a pothead? Or is it more severe? Chat, is it more or less severe than being a pothead? I'm talking wake up, smoke a bowl. Go to work, smoke during your lunch break, come home, rip a bong. Some of you are saying it's the same. Some of you are saying you don't die from weed. Some of you are saying... Some of you are just yapping, bro. Because a bodybuilder's perspective would be smoking weed all day is degenerate and lame, whereas gaining muscle is actually bettering yourself, but that's probably cognitive dissonance happening. They probably have, they're probably so roid-brained, they have no idea what they're talking about anymore or who they are. Stop taking drugs because every day not on those drugs is a day wasted to him. And that's exactly- You may not die from weed, but you might as well be dead if you're baked 24-7. <laughs> oh shit that is that is straight heat because i guess there is a quality aspect to this too some people would argue you get a better quality of life being roided because you're strong and uh, fucking giga chad turbo masculine fucking you know or versus being baked you're just like eh, nothing bothers you coffee's a drug no it's not good one good one it's nectar of the gods it's literally it's Coffee's not a drug. What Tony is in a way, he's dependent on all of these drugs that he surrounds himself with. And I think it gives him this feel that he has some omnipotent control over just about everything around him. I like to have sex with three women per day, every day, different ones, and then rotate. So maybe like- Um, coffee is a drink, it's not a drug. Sex with, I like to have sex with at least nine girls per week and three different ones per day. Hold on, can we, <laughs> let's rewind this. <laughs> Coffee's not a drug. This just in, coffee's not a drug. <laughs> hey chat, guess what? The source is me, and I'm right. I think we just missed some insane lore from Tony Huge. Let's go back. In this feel that he has some omnipotent control over just about every- Chat, I swear to God, if you if, if one of you says coffee is a drug one more time, you're getting banned. You're getting banished. I'm a caffeine maxer, okay? I do not care. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not. Everything around him. I like to have sex with three women per day, every day, different ones, and then rotate. So maybe like sex with, I like to have sex with at least nine girls per week and three different ones per day. I'm like, dude, if he wasn't manipulating his physiology or. <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> dude, caffeine's not a drug. It's actually medicine. 
uh, uh, for chemistry to a certain extent, his dopamine receptors would be absolutely fucking fried right now. Holy shit. His whole way of life, his whole preaching is about freedom and living the way you want to live, but at the same time, he's micromanaging every aspect of his life, having to stick to drug routines because if he falls off, he'd be in a shitty situation. I mean, we're men, we love sex, and sure, it's- I don't. Nope. Sex? Cringe. What are, what are, what are you, are you tempted by, by, by flesh? What are you, 12? Oh, bazoongas. Boing, boing, honkers. Aruga. Please, please. I, I have shit to do. I have money to make. I have lands to conquer. This is why bodybuilders are cringe. They're, they're they, they, they wear their goon tattoo on their, on their, on their shoulder. They're just, I'm a proud gooner. It's like, we know. It's important. I mean, your boobs are huge. I mean, I want to squeeze them. Oh. <sighs> Mama. But there's nothing even slightly fulfilling about having sex with multiple women all of the time. I think if you- Oh, Coach Colton based? Tradcath Coach Colton? Been able to do this in a fortunate area of your life. It's actually more stressful the longer you do it and almost brings into a really tough situation of depression. At a, at a certain point, you just kind of feel less human and more sex object. And also it's not because these women who he surrounds himself with Imagine banging literal prostitutes in rotation. <laughs> like you have a problem. <laughs> it's not like he's rising up these exquisite foreign educated women. No. He's literally going to brothels and being like, yeah, you. Want to be around Tony. He calls them a harem, but literally, if we go to Thailand right now, I can show you the bars that they work at, which he gives them cash to bring home with him. It's not any kind of wives or any kind of relationship. He pays for their time and they come back home with him. The harem goes marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The harem goes marching one by one, hurrah. What's your excuse, Western man? If Tony didn't pay these girls in the harem, they'd run, they'd run. If they don't increase their bank accounts by one, by one, they're not for- Why do they look young? Because they, they probably are. <laughs> I mean, let's be real here. For you, they don't love you if money wasn't- <laughs> Oh, chat. Oh, fuck. You get me, chat. You get me. You really do. You guys are funny. I'll give you that. Bob, they wouldn't love you. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that Tony- For you. This lifestyle is so strange to me sometimes, but for Muslim culture, it's totally normal. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a Tony Huge caption that we're looking at. He's like, yeah, this is strange for me, but, you know, Muslims, they- This is, this is just another Tuesday. Inshallah, brother, am I right? <laughs> Oh my god. It's almost like, it's almost like, just with Joseph Smith and Mormonism, and L. Ron Hubbard, Hubtard with Scientology, people, false prophets, create religion and cults to self-serve themselves. Let me reiterate that having multiple wives, is, is there's nothing godly about that. That is surely just temporal hedonistic pleasure. Making yourself a god. They don't love you. If money was involved, they wouldn't love you. Now, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that Tony has multiple... Take the atheism pill, Philly. I can't. I took that. I already took that when I was like 14. From like 14 to 23, I, I was on the atheism pill. But then... <laughs> but then people in my life really close to me died. And I, I didn't like the thought of never seeing them again. <laughs> so now I cope with humor. Sell mainstream supplements like Enhanced Labs. And some of them sell more questionable products like Enhanced Athlete. But another company that you might not know Tony is involved with is Swiss Chem, which you've probably seen this brute of a- Swiss Cum? Another company that you might not know Tony is involved with is Swiss Chem, which you've probably seen this brute of a human talk up on some sort of social media platform, most likely Instagram. Submit fat law stack. I would say five of me, no one on Q. This is what I use. No, if I'm being real, <clears throat> a lot of people think uh, Phil's on his his Christ arc. He's Christianity pilled. I grew up Catholic. I'll say that again. Okay, I went went through Catholic education. For me, for me, if if you take human sin out of the equation, right, the uh, the fallibility of man, priests abusing their positions of power and committing ultimate sins on young boys and uh, being shuffled around by the Vatican and shit like that. 
obviously, obviously, if God was real, I hope they burn in eternal hellfire. Um, however, for me, it's more of the golden rule. It's treating your neighbors. It's leading a fulfilling life. The, the very, if, if you, as long as you're not a fundamentalist and saying, well, Noah's Ark in uh, 4,000 years ago, like, obviously, they're analogies and metaphors and what's the fucking word? What's the word when a story is uh, allegories? Allegories. The message is all that matters. And the message of Roman Catholicism, even Eastern Orthodoxy, according to Jesus Christ and his teachings, it is hard to argue that Western culture is not built upon those very tenets. I know you could, you could sit here, atheism pill, the Reddit chungus, and be like, well, you don't need God for morality. No, you don't. But there is a blanket of truth in those stories in terms of human nature that's all i'll say utilized for my show prep as you guys know here i am a jack huge parables that's it freaking shredded now people used to say that they were quite oh, irreputable oh my god here we go here we go with the, the fucking the debate lords well actually western civilization was built off the enlightenment <laughs> actually was built off the age of industrialization brand they could get products from them and they worked very well but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore a lot of people are reporting that they haven't simply received their orders and they're claiming that the label isn't e bro i can't i can't chat i can't make a point without getting counterpointed by 10 different people but that's okay i still love you all even what's in the product with this guy going as far to state that the mk677 isn't even real because it doesn't dissolve in water which really there's two obvious takeaways here they're all bro scientists and they're hurting people because they're selling garbage so in my opinion storms are not safe it may actually be worse than steroids these are all bro scientists and they're hurting people because they're selling garbage now i'm not condoning any kind of peptide or sarm but having these things in encapsulated formulas is a bit of a red flag for me now sarms do typically come in powders but a lot of things if there is a god why do i get no maidens i love how we're talking about <laughs> religion off of one little excerpt that we saw that tony huge posted about meanwhile we're, we're, we're supposed to be here about we're supposed to be here talking about the shadiest doctor in bodybuilding but this is the Schizo channel, so let's get into it, okay? Fill me in on the Age of Enlightenment. Teach me about the Western values that we currently have, uh, uh, that, that directly stem from the Age of Enlightenment. Go. Right now. Right now, go. I want to see, I want to see Times New Roman, 12-point font, MLA, paragraphed fucking sentence structure at at least a college reading level. You have 45 seconds. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. But uh, until then, I'm going to, I'm going to continue to watch you can reconstitute with bacterial static water and that lyophilized puck that the stuff is going to come in mostly peptides is going to then turn into a fluid very easily but i also think that people don't realize this is a completely unregulated realm of the marketplace there is quite literally nothing in place stopping them from fulfilling your order <laughs> you gotta be <laughs> so fucking stupid to go to this website with your mouth open to oh uh, oh uh. Oh, just click every bottle add to cart. Like, what? Are you good? Are you actually good? Who puts foreign chemical objects and substances into their body off the off the advice of <laughs> a passport bro fucking dr larper there's also nothing in place to stop them from selling you fake products and it doesn't mean anything that they have test reviews on their website because quite frankly they were done by a third party they could have paid off or these could have been a one and done kind of thing they batched one sample and sent that and that was their positive sample then they said cool we got what we need let's just start selling the bunk now and if you're tapped in like me you've definitely seen this as a reoccurring theme with a lot of different companies on the supplement market and on the underground lab market and unless you're testing with someone like Janoski, where they can verify your results on an independent website this means virtually nothing but they even state that they'll refund your product if you don't like it if you test it yourself and it's not good but what's a refund worth if they're not even refunding lost orders to begin with tony has already wound up in court multiple times over these simple companies and like i said in the past he'll operate in that gray zone as much as he can just to get out of this kind of stuff he doesn't want to make himself a liability so did he literally go to thailand to escape any sort of potential legal trouble or does he face legal trouble 
overseas as well. Doesn't seem like it. He went to Thailand with his uncle and faces troubles in both places. Why would he go with his uncle? Are you guys close with your uncles? Like, I like my un uncles, but I don't know if I would ever move in with one across the world, you know? I, w I don't think I would be Uncle Maxed. Going as far as evading any kind of statements within court and trying to cut all ties with these companies by lying and using someone else's name to throw under the bus. Uncle in Thailand checks out. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> And like Scott Cavill, who was sentenced to prison over the whole DMP scandal, when we've clearly got dozens of articles online acknowledging that Tony was the face of the entire company product, and yet got away with no consequences whatsoever. And there's one saying that goes, a lawyer who represents himself in court has a fool for a client. This lawyer has made sexual advances on me. He, well, he's mis misrepresenting my case. He told me if, if I wanted him to do a good job i had to let him give me oral sex and i honestly think that one of these days tony's gonna slip up and not be able to cover his ass with all the gray zone operations i mean there's an insane amount of evidence this looks like a home depot bro how much product does this man turn over since of him manufacturing these drugs on a very large scale and his twitter handle is literally fucking enhanced athlete so i find it radicalized that he's able to completely disconnect himself from any kind of liability for these companies but as i mentioned in the last video I talked about Tony in where there's a murder case at hand the FBI is already having an open case and in looking into this character did I miss that the first time the FBI has a case open against him given that the uh the murder that we're talking about happened on his own damn property and I think the reason that he's so fixed on all these eastern Asian countries like Thailand and the Philippines is because he's a gooner He's a gooner, 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 goon, 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 goon all day long. Yeah, women, women, vagina, vagina, cheeks go clap. Can I clap some cheeks? Couldn't be me, bro. Simply would never be me, bro. You're a slave to your own Johnson. This is because he can get away with all of this stuff. He can buy out the law and protect himself from the United States. Because ultimately, if he stepped back in the United States for any prolonged period of time, his ass would get got. I mean, I know he comes to the Olympia every so often, but uh, maybe that's just something the FBI doesn't know about yet. I, I don't know. Maybe this is the year. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll see when I go. Mommy Milky! Mommy Milky! story is stay away from the freaks and the weirdos online we've covered a lot of them here and i continue to do so as i plan to post every single day and if you're interested in finding out who those i'm not into fitness anymore i'm i'm into fitness slop into your algorithms you know what i'm saying for real the fitness community is slop <laughs> it actually is and those who slop the hardest rise to the top